in the final days of early voting, and we're standing outside of the Hayes Taylor Memorial YMCA. Yes, rapper and activist Common came out to play a little bit of hoops and encourage early voting. All right, Common. So my first question to you is, what is the biggest difference between you and your generation as first-time voters compared to this generation of first-time voters? Were you guys more informed then? Are we more informed now? Was it cooler then? I think you. I think you guys are more informed. You guys have like a more um, concentrated charge. Um, I've never. I can't think of a time when I, it has happened in my lifetime, and even some of our elders have said that they haven't seen you know, the galvanizing of young people with the focus, the way we saw this year. Um, and, and even prior to this year, I, I could see, you know, the, the revolution in, in, in our young people and the, and the change and the work and the, and the passion. So I think, you know, what, I, what I'm feeling coming from this generation is like, a, it's a focus there, it's a charge, it's a um, unstoppable force in a way that I think is, it's so beautiful. I'm I'm enthused by it. I was motivated by it, like seeing, being a part of the protest myself and seeing young people in it and hearing young people speak up. Um, and I've been at rallies and marches where I'm like, man, these young people, like, I said, I wasn't thinking like that smart. <laughs> like, and, you know, when I was that age, you know, even older. So I'm I'm inspired by it. I just, you know, hope and believe that that we also take that to to the polls. Because I just, I heard a number, I was out earlier today with, with, with an Aggie um, and she was, we were going around knocking on doors and she told me that only 308 people mm -hmm. are registered to vote um, at a and And that really surprised me because it's 3,000 st plus students. Yeah. So I'm like, man, that charge that we got, all the times we tweet and talk about, or uh, Instagram a picture of, of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, or George Floyd, or I can name a lot of other names. Anytime we tweeting about that, we not completing the, we not completing the move if we don't vote. Okay, so like considering the context of hip hop with politics, what do you think it's important as like a musician? Yourself, you use your platform to encourage people to engage. Well, I, I grew up on, on hip hop music and a lot of it was was social political. A lot of it was like conscious. It was teaching me about different things, whether it was about Africa, whether it was about certain politicians, whether it was about the Bible, it, it, you know, Islam, it was different. Hip hop brought so much consciousness to it that, um, the platform of hip hop culture always was that, and though it evolved and spread out and expanded, I still think the core of it is, is something that is a voice for people, for our people, for, for young people, and just for generations as we evolve. Um, and I think when you have a microphone, you have to use it for something powerful, you know? Even, you know, sometimes it's entertainment, but sometimes it's gonna be like, hey, Hey y'all, this is what's going on. Let me let me go ahead and like shed this light with you on, on this. And, and how would you say you've used your music to amplify, you know, different messages throughout your career? How do you think that's helped you? Well, I think I started by using my music just by telling my own stories, like um, and things I was experiencing and things I saw in my environment. And and I'm from the south side of Chicago, so I could, you know, when I spoke to what I saw going on there, it related to, to people in Greensboro, it related to people in Brooklyn and people in Atlanta and people in Alabama and people in, in South Central. The more education I got, knowledge I, I got, experiences I had, I realized that, that I could talk about things abroad that actually affected people's lives too. And not only telling my personal stories, but talking about and being a voice for them. So I started to use my music for that. But one key element was, well, no matter how conscious your art is, it still gotta be dope. Cause if it's not dope, then people ain't gonna pay attention to it. And, you not, and it's counterproductive to what you wanna accomplish. So I always wanted to keep those two elements in my music once I discovered that that was 
part of my purpose. And so what would you say your message to black young voters would be? Man, y'all have done a lot of work out there. You got a lot, a great word out there, it's encouraged a lot of people. Y'all sparked the elders, y'all sparked my generation. Please complete the, complete the movement. Finish the move by going out and voting. And voting doesn't mean you stop there. Um, but voting has to be the next step because they, they're protesting in Philadelphia right now. If the, if the people, elected officials don't prosecute, give, or at least give those police officers a trial, it's the same thing. If they do, then, then you see the law at work. Breonna, Breonna Taylor's killers are allowed to just be free because the attorney general, who we have the opportunity to elect, if you live in the state of Kentucky, people voted him in. The difference in that in Minnesota is with George Floyd is different. You vote, we voted in that, the people of Minnesota voted in that attorney general, and look at what happened. That attorney general understood what was going on and said, hey, these, this police officer was wrong. He will be put on trial and will likely go to jail, right? That's a, that, that's a prime example. We spoke up for all these, the, these black killings, but if we don't go vote on it and vote for the, people, the right people in or vote for somebody who's thinking about student loans or vote for somebody who's thinking about criminal justice reform and what's been happening with our prisons and putting black people in prison, then we just allowing the situation to happen. We talking about it, ain't doing it. It's like them people that you know would talk a lot of stuff, but they ain't get really get in the fight. You know what I mean? Like, you know somebody be pointing like, yeah, I'm gonna whoop you. But the fight is going to vote. And then the fight continues by, by holding those people accountable and continue to educate ourselves. And we still do community work. The vote don't stop us from doing community work. In fact, they, they intersect in certain ways and can connect. All right, thank you, Colin, appreciate it. Thank you.